Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. I'm beginning now a new series titled, I Am. And in this series, we're going to be exploring the powerful I Am declarations that Jesus made. And on this particular installment, I'll be looking at the phrase where Jesus said, I am the bread of life. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship, and then we're getting right into this message. Let's worship now. I love you. I love you. I love you, my Lord. I love you. I love you. I love you, my Lord. I In John chapter 6, verse number 35, Jesus makes this powerful statement. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Now, the day before Jesus made this powerful declaration, he actually performed the feeding of the 5,000. This was a miracle. No doubt the people had now gathered around him so that they could be fed physically. And it is in this context that we find Jesus making this statement. So let's go now to John chapter 6, verse 22. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the far shore saw that the disciples had taken the only boat, and they realized Jesus had not gone with them. Several boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the Lord had blessed the bread and the people had eaten. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went across to Capernaum to look for him. 
They found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of His approval. They replied, We want to perform God's works too. What should we do? Jesus told them, This is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one He has sent. They answered, Show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do? After all, our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. The scriptures say Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. And right here he makes the statement, Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I want to look at verse number 27 here for a moment. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. God has so much more for us than what we can see and experience in this world. As I said, the people who had gathered around the Lord gathered around Him because they wanted to receive a physical feeding. They wanted to receive that physical bread. Their minds were on the temporary. Their minds were on the earthly. And Jesus tells them, I am the bread of heaven. I am the bread that came down from God. Now, bread, first and foremost, satisfies. I want to show you a verse found in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 7. A person who is full refuses honey, but even bitter food tastes sweet to the hungry. In other words, when you've been filled, you no longer hunger. But when you are hungry, anything will do. We become so distracted in our everyday lives. We become filled with entertainment. We become filled with accomplishments. We become filled with tasks and responsibilities. We become filled with the things of this world. And the things of this world may satisfy for a moment, but you'll just go hungry again. Jesus is the only one that brings true satisfaction. Only in Jesus do we find true and lasting satisfaction. Only in His presence are we truly filled. And when you're full of Jesus, you no longer hunger for the things of the world. You know, one of the greatest keys to overcoming sin and temptation is not willpower, though you should exercise your will to resist temptation. It's not necessarily following a step one, two, three program. The greatest way to resist sin is to be satisfied in Jesus. The greatest way to resist distraction is to be satisfied in Jesus. Think about it. What is this life? You eat, you sleep, you go to work, you go out, you may go to a restaurant, you spend time with friends, you have material things, phones, cars, clothes, gadgets. What is this world? What is this life? It's temporary. There really is nothing in this world that brings eternal satisfaction. This is partly why Jesus said, I am the bread of heaven. He says that if you eat of this bread, you'll never go hungry again. This tells us that it is in Christ that we find ultimate satisfaction. Being satisfied in Him, we bring glory to Him. When we partake of Jesus, when we are satisfied in His presence, 
We are satisfied spiritually. We are satisfied emotionally. We are satisfied mentally. We are truly fulfilled completely in Him. He becomes our desire. Our hunger begins to intensify for Him. We gain an appetite for spiritual things rather than the things of this world. We become too full of Him to hunger for sinful things or worldly things. Now look at verse 32. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, Moses didn't give you bread from heaven, my father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. Now, the children of Israel, when they were wandering through the desert on their way to the promised land, were fed by God through divine means. It was a miracle. God sent manna from heaven. The children of Israel were allowed to take enough supply to feed themselves for that day. But they weren't allowed to save any for the next day, except for the day before the Sabbath, because they couldn't gather it on the Sabbath day. So God only allowed them to collect for two days the day before the Sabbath. But every day that He fed them, they were instructed to take only enough to be satisfied for the day. Now, I know I just said that in Jesus there is eternal satisfaction, but there is also an aspect to His nature that requires that we consistently partake of Him. Now, just as the children of Israel were only allowed to take a supply for the day, so you and I must partake of our daily bread. This is the second thing that bread does. Bread sustains. Jesus truly is that daily bread. John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word became flesh and made His home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen His glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. That's John chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 14. John chapter 6, verse 58 says this, I am the true bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did, even though they ate the manna but will live forever. Jesus is the full revelation of God. In Him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He sustains you. Yesterday's revelation cannot sustain you through today's trials. Sure, you can remember a revelation, but in remembering that revelation and rehearsing it back to yourself, it actually becomes fresh for that day. When you face everyday trials, when you face everyday temptations, when you face life as we know it on a daily basis, you are sustained and strengthened spiritually as you journey through life by the presence of Jesus. In Him you will find longevity. In Him you will find consistency and faithfulness. If you fear that one day you might fall away, if you fear that one day you might make a sinful mistake again, if you fear that maybe you'll become inconsistent in your prayer, in your devotion to the Word, it is His presence, it is Him. He will sustain you if only you will partake of Him. I know far too many believers, I know of far too many believers who've become so tired in doing good, who've grown so weary in living righteously, And the reason we become weary along our spiritual journey is because we're not eating. We're not partaking of the bread of life. Only in Jesus do we find satisfaction. Only in Christ can we truly be sustained. He adds that strength to your spirit, man. He adds that strength to your ability to resist temptation. He adds that strength to the exercising of spiritual gifts and serving in ministry. When you try to do ministry, when you try to live holy, when you try to love as God loves without the strength that the bread of life brings, you'll grow tired, you'll burn out, and you'll fail every single time. But when you do these things that we ought to do, empowered and strengthened by the bread of life, you will never, ever, ever fail in strength. You will never, ever, ever grow tired. You will never, ever, ever lack spiritual vitality. We must partake 
of his presence, through fellowship, through prayer, through the intake of his word, we feed upon the presence of Jesus. Now, if you are one who struggles to maintain these things in your life, I ask you, what are you feeding yourself? If there is no appetite for the spiritual, it means that you're filling up on the carnal. So my challenge to you is simple. Stop looking for satisfaction in the world. Stop looking for satisfaction in people. Stop looking for satisfaction in accomplishments. There's nothing that can truly satisfy like the bread of heaven. And when you begin to truly find satisfaction in Him, you will have an appetite only for the things of God and sinful desires, carnal desires, even desires of distraction will begin to fade into nothing. And as you partake of the bread of life, you will be satisfied. You will be sustained. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that one now receiving this word. And I ask you, Lord, to help us. Help us to find satisfaction in only you. Help us to partake of who you are. Kill any desire that is not for the bread of life. Kill any craving that would cause us to look to be satisfied and sustained through any other means. And I pray in the name of Jesus that we would be strengthened. We thank you and we love you, Lord. We honor and we bless you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, Amen. Well, I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We're praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like to join the Spirit family, our online church, just go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. And now to your comments. These comments come from a video titled, Time with the Lord, the Right Way to Begin in Ministry. And in this video, I talked about when I began in the ministry and how God used that time I spent with Him to pave the way for true ministry. If you're someone who's beginning in ministry or is in ministry or has a desire to be in ministry, this is something you need to watch. And you can go and watch it right now. It's free, available online. While you're looking for that video titled Time with the Lord, the right way to begin in ministry, make sure you're following us on all the social media platforms. Make sure you're subscribed to us on YouTube and click that notification bell when you do subscribe. And while you're at it, leave a comment in the comment section. When you comment on any one of our videos, your comment may end up in one of the episodes of Spirit Church right here on Encounter TV. Again, these are the comments from Time with the Lord, the right way to begin in ministry ministry. Simran Jatwani writes, Glory to the Most High God. Dear Pastor David, thank you so much for this wonderful message. May the grace of the Father and the Son be with you, your family, and the DHM team in Jesus' name. Teacher Carla writes, Thank you, Pastor David, for reminding me of the importance of having time with the Lord. It could be the first level, but that does not mean that it's unimportant because it is the foundation. God bless you and your team. Jana Palmer writes, Thank you for this word. Thank you for preaching the truth. Regina P. says, This was the right message at the right time. The Holy Spirit is leading me to share the gospel with the people around me, which I have started doing. This message was just in time. Thank you, David. Love from India. Well, God bless you all the way in India. And the final comment comes from Sharon Z, who writes, Spending time with Jesus, simple and easy. Thank you for making this message available because I missed it live. Well, we try to make all of our content available all over the world as often as we can because we believe in sowing gospel seeds. And really, it's the Word of God as it goes forth that brings about transformation. I want to talk to you about something, but first I want to read a verse to you, or a portion of Scripture, really. This is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 6. Now, this topic 
is a very touchy subject because people have a lot of misunderstandings concerning this subject. But I want to read you this portion of Scripture. It's very important. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 6. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Verse 8 says, And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Here's the promise of Scripture. When you financially support the gospel, it triggers this promise. Now, I understand that some have abused this concept and have really used greed and gimmicks and guilt to try to motivate God's people to give. But really, the Bible says clearly here that we're to do it cheerfully. So there is truth to this, though that truth has sometimes been twisted. Now, in verse 10, the Bible says, For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, He will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. In other words, God is the one who provides us with the resources that we might be a blessing to the gospel, to the kingdom, to ministries, and ultimately to people who are lost and need the gospel message. So the scripture is very clear. As you generously sow seed into ministry, into the gospel, not to get, not being triggered by greed, not in response to some gimmick, not in response to guilt, but simply because you love souls and you love the work of the ministry, that's when God provides more resources. Why? Because He can trust you with what you have. See, often we say, God, bless me and I'll give. But it's the other way around. God says, give and I'll bless you. And as you respond in faith to the promises of God, and as you step out in confident hope on the word of God, He will provide everything you need. And I love what the scripture says. It says that He will generously provide all you need. So your needs are going to be met. And then it says, then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Am I saying that if you give to the ministry, you're going to be living in a mansion, driving a fancy car, and you're going to be a multimillionaire? No, that's not the promise of the gospel. We are all going to face trials, and God does appoint some to be wealthy people. But here the scripture gives us the definition, the biblical balanced definition of what it means to truly prosper, and that is that your needs are met, and you have the resources to be a blessing to others. That truly is biblical prosperity. And so I want to challenge you today. As the scripture says, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. And even in these uncertain times, we must sow. We may think, we may imagine that because times are uncertain, that God looks down and winks and says, I understand you're not giving because you're uncertain about the future. That's not the case at all. Even in uncertain times, we must respond in obedience to the Word of God, in obedience to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So, I ask you right now, listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Ask Him, Lord, what would you like me to give? You're not watching this by accident. Don't ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit if He's speaking to you now. Because this is an important cause. People need the gospel. I'm not asking you to give so I can live a life of luxury. I'm not asking you to give so that I can consume it upon my lust. I'm asking you to give to fund the media, to fund the events, to fund the live streams, to fund the Holy Spirit School. Freely we receive, so freely we give. I'm going to challenge you to give a one-time gift or become a monthly ministry partner. When you sign up to become a monthly ministry supporter, we understand that you're giving because you love God and souls but we like to give back to our supporters because we love them. As a monthly supporter, at the $10 level, that's $10 or more a month, you will get access to our exclusive monthly partner Zoom calls where I will update you, the monthly supporter. You'll be the first to hear ministry announcements. 
You get a 10% discount on all ministry apparel. You get event seat reservations at all ministry events. You get an exclusive partner update, and you get a beautiful Dove lapel pin that you can wear to show your support of the gospel. $30 or more a month, you get all of that, plus you get to pick a book from our book catalog. $100 or more a month, you get a 20% discount, so the discount doubles at the $100 level, and you get all four books in the catalog. You can't beat that knowing that you're funding the media, knowing that you're funding the events, knowing that you're funding the live streams and the Holy Spirit School, and it's all going out for free to people all around the world. Souls being saved, lives being transformed, people being delivered, healed, leaders being raised. You just can't beat that. So become a partner today or give a one-time gift, but ask the Holy Spirit what you should do. If you're going to partner with us on a monthly basis, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. If you're going to give a one-time gift, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. And that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.